So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead Pater with you today. I thought I would come out here after I've done all of our evening chores and say I hope you are well and warm and doing awesome in this weather. Right now we are still getting a lot of rain. We are a little bit further south than we used to be, so we're not getting the ice that we are used to getting this time of year, but you never know. You just never know. So frankly, a video like this, to make the point that I really want to make, I, I would take y'all around in the mud, through the barn, through the unbelievable chicken run right now, and out here in the cold, and all of this is gonna freeze tonight, and go through the regular routine. I've done a lot of regular routine videos, and maybe we need a new one coming up. The bottom line is, folks, your time as a homesteader, especially if you are offering products to the public, eggs, homemade items, maybe you can uh, beautiful jellies and jams, maybe you crochet, maybe you have some nice meat to sell to folks. The bottom line is, is your business is a business. Nothing you do is personal, everything is business, and people need to understand that you are working hard every day, almost 24 seven, if not 24 seven sometimes, and that this is a very difficult choice of a lifestyle and that you should never be pushed back upon. So here is what I want to say to you. You have incredible value. Your family has value. Your animals have value. Your children have value. Your time is very precious. And every time that you go out in weather like this or when it's weather that's 99 degrees or hotter and you're working and working and working, there's a lot of people, the mass majority of people, most folks in society, I hate to say it, they might say, oh, those farmers, those people, they work so hard, but let's be honest. Do they really truly understand? I'm not sure they do. So I'm gonna get to the meat and potatoes. Got a little bit of an echo under here. <laughs> you know you're big time when you're filming under an old cow feeder, a cattle feeder. Listen, here's what I'm gonna get to. And, and, you know, we could sit down and do a video where I've got little spreadsheets and ideas and all that, but you guys are smart people. And frankly, this is just my way of giving you a heads up, all of you folks that are new to this lifestyle, trying to get into it. Maybe you've been into it for a couple of years and now you're thinking about trying to think of ways to make a little bit of income off of it, to supplement you. You know, you're not gonna get rich. You know, this is probably not gonna be your main job. This is why my husband never quit his job. My husband has never quit his main job. Number one, we couldn't afford to do what we do. We couldn't afford to raise our kids and hopefully send all of them to college. And we're working very hard on that. We have a lot of animals to feed. And frankly, folks, there is no way in the world that we could go without having health insurance, especially with my husband's health issues. So the bottom line is, is a lot of times, who's out here doing all this stuff? Now you see James in a lot of videos with me and he helps me out tremendously. He helps with heavy stuff and little piddly chores and things like that. But on a daily basis, everybody has their particular chores. But when it comes down to the brass tacks, it's me out here doing a lot of the work because they have other things they have to be doing. My children, my middle boy is preparing for college. My, uh, uh, my youngest boy is almost 16, Mr. Gabriel. For those of you that think he's 20, he's 15 years old. I just wanted to clear that up. Uh, <laughs> he's 15, y'all. Uh, he's my little baby. And you know, he's doing homeschool a lot of the time. I'm trying to edit videos and be a mom and do all of these things, but when it gets down to having to come out and check the chickens and gather the eggs and do the extra planting and do all these things and mo make most decisions, it is me. So what I wanna say is, is whether it's coming, whoever it's coming from in your family, you have to make a decision on what are you going to do if you start selling items to the public, to friends, to family. And what if they just so happen to kinda, kinda shake the camera, they kind of take advantage of you. You better be prepared to know up front how are you going to handle all of this because as I told you before, business is business. So I'm very disappointed to say that again, this hasn't happened very often, but it's happened again in the, in the recent years of me selling eggs. I got stood up yesterday. Straight up, 
like 15 year old girl waiting, you know, in her prom dress and the date never showed up. For what? Two dozen eggs. Should I be fretting about that? Probably not. Am I gonna make a massive issue about it? No. Is it gonna happen again with this person? No, absolutely not. So why am I standing in the rain? Because I wanna show you that in any weather, I'm out here in the rain. I've just gathered my eggs. I just fed my cows. I just bottle fed my babies, all of these things. And this is the life that I choose. I'm fortunate that I have chosen this. We have chosen this as our lifestyle and I'm blessed and I'm thankful for that. And I wish that other people could absolutely spend a day in the life of an average homesteader that has a fairly large farm, not mega, not itty bitty, and just do the things that we do and perhaps see what we do year round. That's what YouTube should be showing, but I still don't think people get it. So here's the deal. Take off my gloves and freeze my other hand. So here's the deal. I don't live off of my egg sales. You know, if you have followed us for many years that I have been selling eggs consistently for about seven years now. I have a really good customer base. I drive a long distance to get to my customers uh, and I enjoy them. They are from Chattanooga all the way up to Knoxville. And we have had many, many, many good times with most, most all of our customers. A few come and go for various reasons, but the nucleus of them are there. But every now and then you're gonna have an individual that just thinks because you know them personally or because they've bought off and on for quite a while that they can just frivolously not show up, not contact you, perhaps make a passive aggressive comment to you. And they think they can do that because they think you might be, let's just say they might, let's just, let's not make assumptions here. Let's just put this in a what if category. Are you beneath them? So let me get this straight. So because I have chosen over the past 10 plus years of my life to take a step back and away from, I guess what you would call a professional job, one that stressed me out beyond, my, beyond recognition, that caused multiple health problems, and I chose to stay home with my children for a long, long time, not make any money at all, <sighs> homeschool my kids, and slowly switch over to this lifestyle, and we love it. So because I like to explore my roots, maybe not wear a whole lot of makeup, roll out the biscuits, and get in the mud with cows, does that make me less valuable of a person? Does that mean I don't like nice things? Does that mean my time isn't important? Does that mean my goods can just be frivolously thrown here or there, bought when and if and how you want to? Because you know, we can always go to Target or Trader Joe's and get our eggs. I wanna let you know that you need to have a plan about this because you're gonna find that you're gonna have people that treat you this way. I know that you like to come to my channel for baby goats and butterflies and roses. I do too, but at the same time, you need to know the truth about people and how that you could be treated in this lifestyle. You know, it's so funny to me because I know a lot of, I've, I've known a couple of old farm guys, farm men, farmers, and you know, they were humble people. Drove old vehicles, didn't live in a fancy house. Simple, you know, good old pinto beans and cornbread, you know, type hardy men. A lot of people could look down upon them in a, in a lot of different ways. But you know what? They could, they could get in their car and they could go to center of town, right in front of the courthouse, anywhere you wanna go, and they could pull out enough money out of their pocket to buy any, anybody out in the whole town. We shouldn't make these assumptions about homesteaders. We shouldn't make these assumptions about especially women that are choosing this lifestyle. I choose this because I want to have a future for my kids. I want a future for my kids. I'm sorry to tell you that I don't believe that just, you know, being homeschooled and going to college and hopefully getting some type of job out there is enough anymore. I don't think it ever has been. We've just been lucky. 
So you need to decide what type of person are you going to be and who are you going to share your time for? Is it going to be individuals that talk down to you, talk about you, and think that you have no value at all? I would recommend you think about that really, really hard. So here is what upset me the most yesterday, is the fact that I took an egg order from a customer, previous customer, and you know, she didn't show up. Now you're gonna sit here and go, well, what's the backstory? Well, there's always a backstory, but the point is, I, she committed, completely committed to buying something from us. We collect our eggs daily. We wash our eggs the day of sale. There is money involved. There is time involved. We have to buy fresh cartons for every new sale that we do. You know, egg cartons can cost now up to 50 cents a piece. Good gracious. We have to take literally half a day to do this. We drive and meet our customers in a very convenient spot. We don't get a call. We don't get a text. We don't get a notification. We don't get a nothing. The worst part about this is, is I had more egg requests yesterday, more requests than eggs that I could provide. So I turned somebody else down and told them no, that I didn't have enough eggs, that I have all these people that are, that are going to buy and da, 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 da. And I had to eat that yesterday. So, you know, you could have a pizza place you could have, uh, uh, you could sew, you could be a bakery, you could make macaroons for a living. I don't know what you do, but just know in advance that I'm telling you, you're going to have to make a decision on how you're going to deal with people that do not value your time, your farm, your lifestyle, and your products. Unfortunately, it's the way of the world in a lot of ways, but that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to take it. Now, here's the kicker. Lots of different people, depending on how shrewd they get in the business world, will take a lot of crap off of people just for the high, the, the good old mighty dollar. You know, to a certain degree, I think you have to be understanding of people and their situations. I do think you have to work with your customers. I do think you need to be, you know, very understanding of situations. Listen, I have for years. I've driven to their houses and dropped them off. I've had people accidentally forget their checkbooks or don't have enough cash. They'll mail me a check. The redemption in these things is how they treat you after the situation. Does that make sense? It's just like getting in a fight with somebody and they say something horrible to you and they apologize sincerely and they say, I'm never going to do that again because I value you as a person. I value you, you know, your feelings. I value whatever's going on. So when you stand people up, when people stand you up, especially if they are a repeat offender, they do not value you and your lifestyle. I'm gonna tell you right now, at this point, I'd, I would absolutely convince you to sling your eggs over into the uh, woods over there than to let somebody tread all over you harder than a rooster. Now with that, you might want to think about different ways of collecting money. You can, I would highly recommend that if you are creating something for somebody, if you are collecting something from somebody, if you're going to sell something to somebody, personally, eggs are difficult. For me, they are only because I don't know how many I'm going to have till almost the day of sale. But if you can work it out to whatever you're doing, you can get a prepayment online, get their money first, no refunds. I would recommend that at this point. I would also have a strict policy for no shows, lack of funds, lack of payment too. A lot of, you know, we go into this thinking that everybody's good hearted, that everybody values what you do. And I'm telling you, 99% of the time, absolutely. It's that one percenter every time that just disappoints. So I'm not trying to be doom and gloom. I know it kind of sounds that way. I'm not trying to be negative. I would rather be very real in telling you what happens from time to time because it's very disappointing. Because the reality is, is if every time I have an egg sale, I have one or two or five that don't show up or I doesn't sell or doesn't do this, 
Folks, your business is sinking. I have a lot of employees to feed here on this farm, a lot. Have you, have you checked out how much chicken feed costs lately? I gotta sell approximately three dozen eggs to compensate me for one bag of chicken feed. That doesn't account for new nesting boxes, hay or straw or, or pine shavings or cleaning supplies or supplements or all the things that us chicken folks have to do and buy and you know we replenish our chickens you know when you go to that hatchery and you order chicks you know they cost money too and so does shipping so what i'm telling you is, is be proud of who you are be proud of what you do stand your ground you don't have to be a jerk to hold the line and hold your boundaries and you need to one of these days all of these folks are absolutely going to remember and understand how important you are all the while you're just working the land <laughs> guys we appreciate you watching we appreciate you being here there's we're going through some tough days in recent years people are changing things are different there's a lot of stress small businesses in the last year or so have really really struggled people would buy my eggs but we went through a tough winter and let's be honest we were all concerned about being around each other and whatnot that was a strain on a lot of small businesses you need to try to support them because they need you more than ever and that's what i'm saying if you order from a small business see it through you're affecting a family not just a corporation somewhere guys take care stay warm stay safe stay the course and we'll see you in the next video